As with any piece of equipment, it's important that those people using a vertical autoclave understand how to get the best out of it and how to carry out simple day-to-day -day maintenance. So what of the machine itself? It has a chamber capacity of 90 litres and is semi-automatic. It is single-walled with a vacuum system for drying using condensation of steam. The system works by first heating water to produce steam. Air removal from the chamber and load is carried out by three pulses of steam. Sterilization of general hospital loads takes 30 minutes at 134 degrees Celsius. This is followed by a drying phase by vacuum for 30 minutes. Finally, filtered air is allowed back into the autoclave so that the door can be opened and the load taken out. The autoclave can be heated by electricity or kerosene. Heating by gas is also possible. The first step, make sure that water and a steady supply of electricity or kerosene is available. The valves must be checked to make sure they're in the recommended positions for starting the process. A valve is open when its handle is in line with its piping. It is closed when its handle is at right angles to the piping. The yellow valve is the water drain. It should be closed. Red is the air admission valve. It should be closed. Blue is the cooling water valve. It should be closed. Black is the pressure selection valve. Open it for sterilizing at one bar. Close it for sterilizing at two bar. In this demonstration, we will sterilize at two bar, so the valve is to be closed. Green is the air removal steam release valve. It should be open. You can use the bottom external tank, which is detachable, as a measure. It has two marking lines. The lower mark at 8 litres, when heating with kerosene, and an upper mark at 16 litres, when heating with electricity. Open the lid and pour the correct amount of clean water into the chamber. Refer to the instruction manual on optimizing the quality of the water for the sterilizer. When electric heating is being used, the level of the water needs to be above the heating elements, just below the bottom plate in the sterilizing chamber. This can be ensured by using water measured in the bottom container filled to the upper mark. Switch on the heating to maximum power, position 3. While the water is heating, you can start loading the chamber. If you're using the kerosene heater, lift the ventilation plate in the rear of the autoclave using its chain and pull the burner slide out. If it's not already in its place, put the burner on the slide. Check that the air release valve is in the gap on the left side of the slide. Make sure there is sufficient ventilation. The air screw must be loose so that air can escape as kerosene is poured in. Unscrew the filler cap and make sure there is sufficient paraffin or kerosene in the tank. That is approximately three quarters full. Then replace the cap. Fill the preheater cup with methylated spirit or alcohol. Light the preheater. Now leave the burner alone. Do not fiddle with it. If you've not already done so, connect the tube of the foot pump to the air valve on the burner. When the methylated spirit is almost burnt out, close the air screw and give a few strokes on the foot pump. The stove should light at the top of the burner. Have a match or lighter ready in case the stove does not light immediately. If the flame burns unevenly around the burner, the jet may be blocked. Wire cleaning needles or prickers can be used to reach into the flame and clean the jet. Always use the correct diameter pricker for the stove, 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. Bent pieces of wire, etc., will damage the fine jet. 
To reduce the height of the flame at the burner, loosen the air screw gradually. This releases some pressure and the flame will become smaller. To make the flame bigger, increase the pressure by gentle pumping until the pressure gauge on the pump indicates 3 bar. Do not over pump or the tank can become damaged. The burner is now ready for use. Push the slide with the burner on it under the chamber. The water in the chamber will start heating. Repump the burner every 30 minutes. While the water is heating, the autoclave can be loaded. It should not be overloaded as the steam has to be able to move freely and penetrate each pack. The packs should not touch the chamber wall, so use grid baskets or drums. Now close the lid and tighten the wing nuts. Always tighten down two opposite wing nuts at the same time. This will pull the lid down evenly and ensures a proper seal. The water starts to heat up. As the water heats up initially, air and later steam will come out of the exhaust. The water will now be boiling. Have the jet of steam flushing for approximately 5 minutes. Now close the green valve. This is the air removal or pressure release valve. The pressure in the chamber will start to rise. Watch the manometer. When the pressure has built up to one bar, open the green valve, the pressure release valve. Let the pressure drop to 0.2 bar and then close the green valve. Allow the pressure to build up a second time to one bar. Then open the green pressure release valve again. Let the pressure drop to 0.2 bar and then again close the green pressure release valve. Allow the pressure to build up a third time to 1 bar. Then again open the green valve. Let the pressure drop to 0.2 bar and close the valve again. Now let the pressure build up until it reaches between 2.0 and 2.2 bar, which is 134 degrees Celsius. At this point, Sterilization starts. Set the timer for 30 minutes. This pressure and temperature has to be maintained for 30 minutes. You can reduce the water heater to position 1. However, make sure that the pressure does not drop below 2 bar. A light steam jet should be escaping from the exhaust all the time. If necessary, adjust the heating to maintain the pressure between 2 and 2.2 bar. After 30 minutes, you can then stop heating. With electrical heating, switch off the power by putting the power switch in position 0. In the case of kerosene heating, put out the flame by opening the air release valve on the burner so that the pressure will drop and the flame will go out. Now open the yellow valve. This is the pressure release for the chamber and acts as the water drain. When the pressure reaches 0.2 bar, close this valve. Now pour cold water in the upper exterior water tank to the filling grid, approximately 16 litres. This upper tank is for the cooling water for the condenser coil in the bottom of the chamber. You can use a bucket for pouring in the water. If you have a tap for the water supply to the autoclave, open the tap and fill the water tank to the grid. If you have been using the autoclave already, the lower exterior water tank may be full. If the water is cold, you can reuse that water for filling the upper tank. Remember to replace the lower water tank. Now open the blue valve. 
This is the cold water supply to the cooling coil. The cooling water passes through the cooling coil and will collect in the lower water tank. The remaining steam in the chamber will condense on the coil and because of that a vacuum is created which dries the load. The pressure will drop to approximately minus 0.8 bar. Maintain this vacuum for a minimum of 30 minutes. Then close the blue valve. Now open the red valve on top of the lid, the air admission valve. Air will enter the chamber and the pressure will increase to atmospheric pressure. The pressure gauge should show zero bar. The lid can now be opened, but be careful of any remaining steam as this could scald you. If steam escapes when you open the lid, this indicates that the vacuum has failed. Once the lid is opened, wait for a minute or so before taking out the load. Then take the items out and transfer them to a transporting trolley or shelf. Allow ventilation and cooling down before storing. Check the autoclave tape for change of colour. At this point, a responsible person signs for the release of the sterilised packs and they are taken to the sterile storage area. Autoclaves must be regularly maintained. General cleaning should be done with a clean dry cloth. Do this at the end of the working day. Ensure that the bottom is free from any textile fluff. To check this, remove the bottom plate in the sterilizing chamber. The seal on the lid must be checked for damages. Read the instruction manual for information on day-to-day -day maintenance. Remember, it is essential to operate an autoclave correctly, so that the instrument packs for the operating theater and other departments are correctly sterilized. The doctors and health professionals may be the ones treating the patients, but the health of the patient is also your responsibility.